Hi everybody, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here, weather in five, five days and five minutes. And we are going to go uh, right through the 4th of July with no weather issues at all. If you look at the uh, satellite loop this evening, uh, it's just bone dry uh, in uh, much of the northeast. Right in here, just somebody just decided to maybe cut out a nice area of dry air. And that is going to be moving eastward and a little bit southward. Not a lot, but a little. But the bottom line is uh, we've got uh, great weather conditions for tonight and great weather conditions for tomorrow and tomorrow night. So fireworks shows will be able to go on without a hitch. In the meantime, if you take a look at the clouds in the south, some of these clouds in the showers and thunderstorms, those flashes you're seeing actually are lightning strikes. There is a, a narrow east-west high, upper high here. And if you look at how the clouds are turning, they're actually turning clockwise um, uh, northerly, north to south on the east side of the high and then from south to north on the west side. So that explains the movement of these daytime showers and thunderstorms that flare up. The, the ones in the southeast are actually moving from north to south. The ones that you see in Texas and Oklahoma are are actually moving on to the north. This is where the hot and humid air is. Some areas are more hot than others. But over the next 10 days, I really don't see anything changing in terms of the overall upper air pattern. Here's a look at the radar uh, this evening. We see the scattered showers and thunderstorms and even some isolated severe thunderstorms noted by some of these yellow boxes, which are severe thunderstorm warnings. Obviously, by the way, if you're watching this, this, the radar is dated. It's as of 5 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, if uh, you're in this area here in the southeast, for example, and you're thinking about whether these storms are severe or not, you should go to weather.gov to your local National Weather Service office and check out with the latest weather information. Nothing on the radar in the northeast down uh, into Virginia. You get into southern Virginia, northern North Carolina, you see some showers and thunderstorms there. Nothing as you go west into Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia Indiana, most of Kentucky, Illinois, uh, the lower Great Lakes, all nice and dry. The uh, showery, uh, heavier rains that are developing here up in parts of Montana, uh, and back over into Washington State. Uh, that is the uh, area that has some severe weather risk tonight, as the Storm Prediction Center is indicating, across Montana into, into North Dakota, a larger area of slight risk also uh, showing up here, but nothing for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states. And as we check out the next couple of days, it's fairly quiet. Uh, no uh, thunderstorm risk at all for Monday. Uh, from Maine down into North Carolina, back into West Virginia. You get into western Pennsylvania, maybe a chance that there could be a shower or a thunderstorm. And then as we move on to Tuesday, as the next cold front approaches, we've got a marginal risk for severe weather uh, to about New York City and points west. A slight risk uh, in Pennsylvania, central and southeastern, south central PA down into Maryland and uh, northern Virginia, West Virginia, southern Ohio. Again, that is with the next weather front going by. And as far as rainfall is concerned over the next week, generally a half to three quarters of an inch. When you add all these weather fronts, the rain from these weather fronts and thunderstorms together, you're going to wind up on average of a half to three quarters of an inch. But just bear in mind that we're in the time of year where you get into some stronger thunderstorms, like, for example, what they did, what, what happened in central and eastern Long Island yesterday, where some areas wound up with uh, two to three inches of rain in some of those thunderstorms. That's always a possibility uh, in in the summertime. Heavy rains in the coastal Carolinas, heavy rains in the uh, Appalachians of two to three inches possible, also in parts of uh, the upper Mississippi Valley and the northern plains getting some heavier rains back over into Montana. Uh, the monsoon rains continue in parts of the southwest, while California and Nevada uh, mostly on the dry side. So uh, just looking at the upper air pattern uh, for the next uh, week to 10 days, uh, it's the same as it was for the last week to 10 days. Actually, for the last several weeks, we continue to see these troughs. I'm just running this backwards to Friday. Uh, these upper troughs that drop into the eastern states and we get these dry air masses coming down from Canada because the flow uh, is uh, northwesterly. Uh, if you uh, look at uh, what's happening here uh, with respect to the upper flow, uh, you've got uh, northwest winds in the upper atmosphere. So that brings down these cooler air masses. And we're going to continue to see 
those cooler air masses uh, move along. Uh, every couple of days, you'll get a cold front to move on through, and you get into some showers and thunderstorms. And again, as we run, this is the European model, by the way, and you see these troughs keep swinging down out of Canada, bringing down these cold fronts and cooler air masses. And then it gets actually somewhat active here after the se day seven uh, in the eastern part of the United States with this troughing that goes all the way down into Florida. That is unusually far south. So look, our air, you know, the air is coming down out of Canada into the Great Lakes and then swinging out uh, into the eastern part of the U.S. So uh, fairly interesting to see this uh, as we move through the middle part of July. This is the time of year where sometimes the ridge can be built all the way up into southeastern Canada. And this year, uh, the it's just not happening. Uh, we're in, in a totally different world. And I, I can't remember really the last time we had a, something like this. Uh, in the month of July. So here we have our front for Tuesday that moves along with some showers and storms. Then a, another high builds in with drier air for Wednesday and Thursday. Another front probably as we get toward Friday into Saturday. Then another dry air mass, assuming everything moves along for Sunday into Monday. And then followed by another weather front that will approach beyond that. And now, of course, we're at Ju uh, July the 12th and 13th temperatures uh, tonight will be in the mid 50s to low 60s in most areas in eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England high temperatures tomorrow will be in the low to mid 80s will be mid to upper 80s on Tuesday and then we're going to drop off again a little bit and the humidity is going to drop off as we head toward Wednesday and Thursday quick check of the tropics not much going on weak tropical waves don't expect any tropical storms to develop over the next five days in the Atlantic Basin and uh, we might be in for a quiet period uh, for the next week to 10 days before maybe activity starts to pick up later this month or more than likely toward the end of the month and as we get into the month of August. Uh, we had a Joe and Joe weather show this morning. Uh, at, uh, it was at 11 a.m. So tomorrow we'll have our uh, Joe and Joe weather show at our usual time, which is 730 Eastern. And we hope to see you then.